Okay, welcome everybody. This is um, the special meeting for the Field Sports Advisory Council on November 16th, 2022. Um, uh, sorry, Eric. Eric, yes? sorry. It's not counting down, so give me one second. Okay, sorry. Okay, it okay, seems Dan. to be working now. Okay, Dan, so now you can start now after we got that beautiful entrance. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, did you get the entrance or? No, you um, can start with that, so. Uh, okay, so um, this is a special meeting agenda for the Field Sports Advisory Council, November 16th, um, uh, 2022. Um, and uh, we'll do the roll call first. Okay. Or call so to order, sir. First. Call, call, yes. Um, going through the chat, I'll just go in order. Do we have um, Crossroads um, Middle School and Elementary School, High School? Is here with Federico. I am here. Can you hear me? Um, yes, we can, Federico. Thank you. I'm here, yes. Okay, we have um, Academy of Lacrosse, SM Dragons. Uh, next, we have uh, Pacific Coast um, Soccer Club. Here. Okay, thank you. Um, Santa Monica Girls Fast Pitch. Here. Um, Santa Monica Pony. Here. Santa Monica Little League. Here. Uh, let me see. We have Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District. Good evening, Eric. Thank you, Robert White, our man, Robert. So, sent us a representative from the school district this week. And I believe that brings us to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight representatives, if I count correctly. My check marks are a little laid apart. And we do have from the city here, we do have myself, I'm Eric Johnson, uh, program supervisor, community recreation. And um, I guess I'll introduce Micah Ackerson, who is our fearless leader in our unit, um, principal community services supervisor. Um, and also, excuse me, I forgot, Stephen Johnson. Jeez, sorry, Stephen, you're my cousin. You're my cousin. We had to share the same last name, and I forgot you, Stephen. Um, Stephen Johnson, um, Santa Monica Rugby Club, and I'll give you a proper interjection, Stephen. That's my fault. And uh, Rec and Parks Commissioner Johnson. So, Stephen, thank you. My brother from another, well, it could be from the same mother with the same last name. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, and um, and we also have Noe Mendoza. Thank you for being able to join us with um, the Community Service Department. He is our man behind the scenes. Um, without him, a lot of this recording and all this other stuff is not possible. So thank you, Noe, for being able to join with us. I know you do tons of these, so, and you're a very busy man. So we appreciate you giving us your time. To see yeah, you. of course. So Dan, that gives us our, I think, our complete membership here. I don't see anybody else added um, that's still there. So um, I think we are we are good to go. Okay, terrific. Um, is there any first uh, uh, item is public input? Is there any public input? Um, nothing has been shared with me in regards to public input in regards to today's special meeting. Nothing has come into the general mailbox either. Okay. Um, then the new uh, uh, next order of business number two is new business, the action items, moving the persons, uh, moving the meetings to in person, and moving the meetings to quarterly. Okay. Um, before, obviously, we had mentioned this at the last meeting, so I want to kind of just give everyone the information before we go into the, um, a vote in regards to this. So I want to just so people understand what we are voting on. So just as a reminder, so it's two different motions that we're doing, okay, or that if we want to move on, this is what we're doing. So to move the meetings to quarterly, that will be one motion, Dan, okay? And the second mm -hmm. motion would be to move to the meetings to in person. So I want to preface this. According to the city clerk, to move the meetings quarterly, we just need a majority vote, okay? To move the meetings to in-person, we need to have a unanimous vote. 
the city cannot support a hybrid model, so it's either all in or all virtual. So the vote has to be unanimous for that, just a heads up. And this is coming from the city clerk's office, and thank you, Noe, for providing that information for us. Okay, so I guess we should, uh, the first item we should vote on is um, quarterly. Um, can there be a motion to um, do a hybrid model? Like if we're, if we have a lot of uh, things going on, we would have a meeting the next month. If not, we would, uh, you know, skip a month or two. So um, you can have, if you decide to go into a quarterly meeting, uh, you'll meet quarterly, but um, as a uh, advisory body, you are allowed to have special meetings ever. Um, so those could happen um, in, a, in a month that you don't have a meeting. Those could happen if staff have, uh, well, actually recreation and parks have something that they want you to present on. Uh, special meetings can happen um, whenever. So it's, you won't be, you won't be able, you'll be able to have a meeting whenever pretty much, but your original, your regularly scheduled meetings will be quarterly. Okay, and Eric, um, can you just um, go over what the regular meeting schedule was in the past? Because I think there were two months that we didn't meet. Um, well, the, technically sometimes it was three. We never met in December. Um, typically we didn't really meet in July. And at times we met maybe in August or if we might have missed all the summer months. So there's potentially we did eight or nine meetings a year, um, depending on certain things. If we decided to meet specially at the end of August, right before, because typically it was just we never met in the summer and we just met September, October, November, then January through through May. Because this was also before the school year got moved up to like mid-August, early August. It was, was, you know, traditional when we all went to school or I went to school it was after Labor Day. So when that changed, we kind of morphed and were able to accommodate the needs of, you know, the groups and the school schedule to be able to adapt to that. So typically it's anywhere from eight to nine meetings a year, which is what historically what we've done. Um, so that's where it was at originally. This was, shoot, this was when it was this, the Sports Advisory Council. Um, Jose Palomares can speak to that because that's how far back that went um, when we used to meet at Ken Edwards Center. So this was a long time ago. So it's morphed and changed, obviously, over the years. So but um, that's where it was originally. Okay, great. So then I guess uh, we should put can it to I a vote. Can I ask a question? Well, actually, if we could, if we still have some questions. So I, I have a question. So to call a special meeting, if we were to go to quarterly, to call a special meeting, what's the procedure for that? Is that as simple as Dan says, hey, Eric, hey, Noe, we need a special meeting because something big is happening, right? Is 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 that all it takes or is there a more procedure than that that is all it takes um so the chair and do y'all have a vice chair sorry i'm not sure yes, have a vice yes, chair. Yes. Yes. yeah so the chair and the vice chair um would figure out why they need a special meeting um and then you just let uh eric and myself know um, we'll have to create agenda and submit it to the city clerk's office and it'll just be like doing a regular meeting there's uh, nothing else to it. It's just that um, it is happening on a date and time that is not your regular meeting. So yeah, um, as a chair and vice chair, you can hold a special meeting. You just have to make sure that you have a quorum for it. And, and what's the, sorry, go ahead. Follow-up question. Um, if we were in the second motion we're gonna have, if we were to say quarterly meetings, the official meetings are, are in person, could a special meeting, because it might be called for an exigent circumstance, can those be by Zoom, uh, as long as we had quorum and notice and all that stuff? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, it's all in or all out. There is no okay. one month virtual, one month, one month uh, in person. Um, okay. It's what the city clerk has informed us. Okay, those are, those are my two questions, thank you. Um, and, and what then, kind of lead? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry one down. other question. Um, sure. What what lead time would you need uh, if we were to call a special meeting? So right now, um, for regular meetings, we have to have the agenda posted at least 72 hours. 
um, with a special meeting, it could be 24. So okay. technically a day, but just to make sure that we have everything processed through the city clerk's office and that we uh, post the agenda publicly and send it out to all of y'all to prepare, hopefully more than one day, but technically yes. 24 hours. All right, cool, thanks. And Noe, I think typically, is, I think he's correct on that um, with, because 24 hours sometimes is not enough time to be able to get a quorum for a meeting. So we don't you, more advanced notice is definitely important to be able to get that meeting going, uh, despite the 24 hours. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, uh, I think so, we, I think know. if we were to do that, we would try and give it you know a week or two. Exactly. So. So then I and guess. I think, we, it, I Sorry, think what we're ahead. proposing, Micah, Micah can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if we were going to vote to move to quarterly, we're looking at doing February, May, August, and November as the four quarterly meetings. Um, so that would be like well, 2581. So, because obviously December we don't meet. Um, so, and that kind of coincides with a lot of the permit times that we would get lead into. So, we think um, February, May, um, August, and November would be the best months to be able to go quarterly if we were to go that route. Yeah, I think those dates are correct that Eric gave. Um, just a heads up, there are four advisory boards to the Rec and Parks Commission, um, the Community Gardens Advisory Board, the Virginia Avenue Park Board, or the SMAC, which is like the Aquatics Board, and all of them meet quarterly. I think the, uh, hey, Eric, I think you can mute yourself really quick. I'm hearing a lot of echo. Um, the Virginia Avenue Park Advisory Board used to meet monthly but i think they recently went to quarterly as well um they are all virtual but that, that's different but th just heads up that's that's where this is coming from this would bring us in line with the other advisory committee i guess my two cents on this situation would be we should go to quarterly this is my opinion go to quarterly just because monthly doesn't seem quite necessary because we also have the ability to go to a special meeting if we need one, so we're always covered. Um, I like meeting in person, but it's also super convenient to be able to do it virtually. So at the end of the day, my, my vote would be to stay virtual just because it's so much easier. But I would I would personally rather meet in person, but this is just so much more convenient. So that's I'm just voicing my opinion. Um, I My suggestion would be maybe we vote and then maybe we go quarterly first, see how the virtual works and then if the quarterly works and we want to in the next after the next meeting we want to go start meeting in person maybe we start meeting in person i don't know i do prefer in in person meetings i just love the convenience of being able to switch a screen on and off you know it saves like an hour <laughs> i think that was the root of my question about um you know quarterly since it's just four times a year that could be in person. If a special meeting were called due to exigent circumstances where we're trying to get an, enough people to talk about some big issue that's coming up, you know, it could be anything, could could be a cell tower going in Memorial Park. Um, you know, if we, you know, the convenience, like you said, of, of being able to hold Zoom, but I understand that it's all or nothing. So, uh, you know, that, that's, that's where it's gotta be, I guess. Can I, can I also say also as, um, as an advisory council to the Rec and Parks Commission as well? Best state we do vote to meet quarterly. There's nothing stopping anyone from us actually at a record parks commission meeting as well, due to voice concerns and everything else, because we are an advisory council. So um, you can go to a record a uh, record parks commission meeting and speak on behalf as a member of field sports advisory council if something comes up. So that way it's preface into that you have a representation with usually typically with Stephen and Marianne, but to hear and get your word across and public record and everything else too is also important as a group, especially when something comes up. And I think the ability, like you mentioned, to be able to hold a special meeting, especially if something comes up or a pending project where you need feedback and we want to be able to share something or if the city wants to do that, I think that having that flexibility to add it is important. And so, I mean, that's just, you know, it's up to ultimately up to you guys, but, you know, at Rec and Parks Commission meetings is also, they meet monthly, I believe, Stephen, correct? And then you can always share and provide public input on any of those things and speak in regards to that as well, too. Yeah, I'm going to continue to try to, you know, push out stuff that seems to be coming in between our meetings, for instance, things that happen that need attention.
Cool. Anyone else? Let's vote. Okay, so the uh, first uh, vote would be um, on whether we want to move to quarterly or not. Uh, I vote no on the quarterly. Okay, so let me just do let me do the roll call on that, Dan, so that way we can keep track of that. So, um, and I'll just go through that. No way, that's the correct way to do it. Correct. Uh, yeah, if you can just go down your list as you have it and ask uh, what their vote is, and then we can tally yeah, so, it up. So just to clarify, this is the motion to move the meetings to quarterly. Okay, so this is the motion we are voting on, just to clarify. So Crossroads Athletics. <coughs> yes, I would like to move to quarterly. Um, Academy of Lacrosse SM Dragons. Yes, move to quarterly, please. Pacific Coast Soccer Club. Move to quarterly. Santa Monica Girls Fast Pitch. Quarterly. Santa Monica Little League. Quarterly. Santa Monica Pony. Uh, monthly. Monthly, leave as is. Santa Monica Rugby Club. Uh, I'm staying. Then Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District, Mr. Robert White. Abstain. Abstain. Okay, so by my vote, we have one, two, three, four, five for quarterly, one for leave as is, and two abstains. So by that thing, the majority goes to um, moving to quarterly. Is that correct, Noe? I have a couple of windows open. Yes, that is correct. Um, I will get that to the city clerk's office and yeah. Okay, so the next motion, Dan, do you wanna move forward with the next motion about in-person or virtual? Uh, yeah, uh, so the vote is for uh, virtual meetings to continue or to begin our in-person meetings at the next meeting, which would be February. That is correct, as of right now. Um, okay. Before, before y'all vote, I do want to say that for this one, you could always bring it back to the table. So um, whatever decision you make now, um, you can also, you know, it doesn't have to be the end of it. So, so we can bring this back up as a action item then at a future meeting from what it Sorry, I muted myself. So we can bring this back up. If they wanted to, they can bring this back up as an action item. Is that correct? Correct. Now? So if you okay, stay, no. if you decide today to stay virtual, and then the next one you decide you want to talk about it again next time, you can decide to change that. Yeah, copy that. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification on that. So, I think that would be the same for the quarterly versus monthly too. If the commission ever decided that they wanted to go back to monthly, we could vote on that as well. Okay, that is correct. Okay, so then. Um, we can vote whether we want to stay virtual or whether we want to meet in person. And Eric, you can go through the roll. Uh, a point, point of uh, procedure question. Usually, Eric, when we do stuff like this, um, when, when the call is down the roll one way, the next vote is up the roll the other way. Um, I got it. If, if you want to do it that way. Not a problem. So I'll go from bottom to top. So okay. thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Okay, so to this, this is a, to clarify, this is the motion to um, move to continue as virtual or move to in person. So we're going to start with um, bottom to top, Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District. Abstain. Santa Monica Rugby. Uh, in person, yes. Santa Monica Pony. Um, in person. Santa Monica Little League. Virtual. Santa Monica Girls Fast Pitch. In person. Pacific Coast Soccer Club. 
in person. Academy of Lacrosse. In person. Crossroads Athletics. And virtual. Okay, so the vote for that is five, one, two, three, four, five in person, two virtual, one abstain, so the motion does not pass. Um, so we'll continue virtual for the next meeting. Um, this can be brought up as a as we meet in February as another option um, to to revote. Um, I guess for, for for what Nelly mentioned. So, but at least the one in February will be virtual as of now. So the motion that motion did not pass. Okay. Um, now we're moving on to agenda item number three, discussion items. Uh, 3A is city staff update and winter closures. All right, so um, I'll start with the, well, the winter closures is the easier part right now, so I'll start with some other stuff that we had going on. Um, um, appreciate some of y'all. Um, we've had some quite a few issues beginning Sunday night over at Clover Park, Maine. Um, thank you to Santa Monica Little League uh, for bringing it to my attention Sunday night. Um, I was driving as I was driving back from the Bay Area. Um, so we alerted our elect electrical staff, our electricians, and our public landscape team. And um, so we were trying to figure out the issue we had. So basically, Clover, Maine, um, when basically um, we only had one or two lights working on every light pole on Clover, Maine, which basically made it unplayable and very unsafe for our permit groups to be able to hold practices um for especially baseball diamond sports it was just very not very well lit and it was become a very it was unsafe and hazardous um for play so um we canceled permits on monday um we had a bit of a run around with edison and our electrical our city's electrician department electrical department um we finally got word back today from um, ernesto torres who's a lifesaver for us here with the city of santa monica um, he only does facility lighting but he usually helps us out with a lot of stuff um, SoCal Addison has been working around the clock um, since about 2.30 to be able to figure out the problem. It turned out there was some underground wiring that was an issue to everything. Unfortunately, to be able to fix that, they had to shut off all lights to the park. Um, so we had to cancel permits Monday, Tuesday, and all of well, just on Clover, Maine. And today we had to shut down all permits on all of our fields as this problem was fixed and remedied. Um, as this meeting is going on, I received a text from Ernesto saying SoCal Addison said, um, the problem should be fixed, so Ernesto and I will be out there in the morning checking to make sure it's um, fixed and troubleshoot um, if need be for that. So um, it's never a dull moment here. So um, we appreciate Ernesto and, his, and basically him and his team for being able to assist us. And they bailed us out quite a few times last minute to be able to prevent any last minute electrical issues at some of our sports fields. Um, they acted as quickly as we can. Um, unfortunately, our hands were a little tied with SoCal Edison. Um, they were able to get here later in the afternoon, um, and he just told me that they were able to get it completed. So we were going to test it out tomorrow morning to make sure it's functional and playable for all of our permit groups. Um, we do apologize for the inconvenience that this, this has caused. Um, unfortunately, it's out of our hands, but as you know, we will um, remove your time from the permit on those days because we're not going to have you pay for something you can't use. And um, But once again, like I said, um, that was a bit, a bit of a hiccup these past few days, um, and I know for some of you guys it's put a hindrance on your practice practices and everything else. So um, as a city, we apologize for that. You know, unfortunately, we do have some of those things that are out of our control. But um, um, fast acting team, electrical electrical department team worked fast with, along with SoCal Edison to try to get this done in a timely manner. And um, we're appreciative of that. So we're hopeful, fingers crossed, that <coughs> everything is back functional tomorrow and we don't have any issues. Um, that's one issue. <laughs> um, Second, you know, winter permits can win out already, as we had talked about. So um, we do have some things that we're just doing some adjustments and modifications. Groups have reached out. So um, we're working with, that, with you on that. So we definitely appreciate all your patience on that. There's a lot of stuff going on with the high school stuff that's kind of made things difficult to be able to allocate some time for some groups. Um, so, um, but we were able to get everything out, which is great. And like I said, continue to email if we need to modify or even if you need to return some time or add some time, we're definitely willing to work with you on some of those things. So. Um, so we're excited um, to get that moving. And on December 1st, well, guess what? You'll be getting your spring permit request. So we'll get that going and move that moving along. So we'll get that to you by um, um, hopefully by the beginning of January. And um, that'll be a little easier for us to get that going. So um, 
winter closures, um, as a lot of you mentioned, um, we do have the Los Amigos baseball field down, I believe, November 22nd through um, first week of February, I want to say the 5th. Uh, they'll be doing some modifications and everything else and some work. Um, the school being down um, uh, for the school district, they have been able to get out a little longer, and we've been told the field's looking a little better, for, at least from the landscape side. I mean, maybe Dan can attest to that for the pony side. Um, but we're hopeful that, you know, everything will be good. They'll do some extra work on it, get it going, and have it ready to go for the upcoming season. Um, Memorial um, Fields 5 and 6 will be down starting the 28th, I believe, of um, November, and that'll be until roughly the same time, February 5th, 6th, um, to be able to do work on Fields 5 and 6 um, for um, Memorial Park. And then the following week, Memorial Fields 1 through 4, which um, I think is going to probably be a, a big chunk of work that they need to get done there. Um, that'll be from December 5th to January, I want to say 28th. Uh, for that, so those are the three closures that will be happening. Um, don't quote me, but there's expected to be a summer closure at one of our fields too. I think we'll see where it's at, um, where we're at with one of these. So it could be either Clover Pit or it could be Marine. Just a heads up, but more more out, more than likely it'll be Clover Pit. We're going to try to rotate like we did in years past, where we'll do a summer closure a little bit um, because it helps with being able to generate the new sod and everything else if we decide to go that route. So we're trying to go back towards that. So. Um, if the provided the field needs it, we're going to do it. If not, then we'll leave as is and try to hopefully get to a point where we don't have to have the major closures like we have. So kind of the plan moving forward. Um, also, Thanksgiving is next week. Um, if you have any time that you're not utilizing, please let us know, well, especially on the weekends. So we can, um, the district and the city allocates staff on a lot of these days, so if you're not utilizing it, it's beneficial to let us know, so that way we can either add some groups or remove some staff to be able to get the time off or, mo or allocate these staff to different areas of our programs to be able to assist that. So if you're not utilizing any time, please let us know sooner than later um, for that, especially for the upcoming weekend. Not, not this weekend, the following weekend. Um, if you're using it, great. We just need to make sure that we can get our staff there to, to accommodate the needs that you that you have. And I believe that's it. As a reminder, next Wednesday is a district holiday, so there is no permits at John Adams Lincoln or Santa Monica. Get an, on your permit for that. So, Micah, I'm not sure if you have anything else to add. Eric, you, you got all the winter permits out, right? Yes, sir. Is that both FSAC and, and non FSAC groups? This is just the FSAC. This is the Field Sports Advisory Council meeting. The other okay. stuff we're working on. Um, and are we are we permitting um, fields on the holiday for Thanksgiving? Are we talking, or what, what holiday are you inquiring about? Any any holiday. Um, typically, we do not um, on the district holidays. We do not do that if the district decides to do that. That their facilities, so you'd have to reach out to the district. The grass field should be open, though. Correct. There won't be any lights, though. So. Okay. Robert White, would, I think he mentioned something. Maybe not. Um, wait, Eric, if you could mute yourself again. Um, yeah, there is one uh, topic. It doesn't directly impact that groups um, in terms of fields. What it does impact is parking. Um, so. Uh, there's a line 16 item recently for council member Negretti wants to look at um, the potential of um, creating dedicated pickleball courts at the interim open space at airport park. Um, that's one part of it. The other part of it is potentially expanding um, pickleball use at Memorial Park. Um, how we anticipate that would impact field users is the parking. Um, I'm sure Allen, Little League, uh, Daniel Campbell will know, you know, when pickleball is going on, when they have their big nights, the parking at Memorial can be quite impacted. So I, I'm not sure if you guys as a group would uh, be concerned about that, but, and I'm not really sure what the, the next steps are. I believe I'll, I'll be going to Steven Johnson and RPC to be presenting on that and kind of getting guidance on that. Um, but kind of throwing it out there to see if that's something FSAC wants to weigh in on or if, if they're not really involved. Uh, as mentioned, the main thing would be the parking. 
um, if they expand use of pickleball here. Right now, the big nights are Monday and Wednesday nights, and then Saturday and Sundays, obviously, during the day. They expanded use. It could be all the time. We really don't know. It kind of depends on the next steps. Obviously, the, the tennis community is um, fighting back now quite a bit, um, so I, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But Sorry, just to clarify, when you say expanded use, just more days and more time at the same facility. Right. And as you can probably tell, Memorial Park was not designed to have like 100 people on the tennis courts. And obviously we have like 60 parking spots. So we have a ton of else going on. Parking was always a challenge at this park to begin with. But now with having additional, a lot of additional bodies on the pick, on the tennis courts, it has made it very difficult during their their biggest times, which are Monday, Wednesday evening, and then the weekend. So, majority of softball parks on six um, because that's where most of the field space is allocated. So I don't. I mean, it's always an issue, as you just mentioned. So I don't foresee any additional complaining, um, only because we're just used to it being packed. And again, mostly everyone parks on 16th. Great. I don't know, maybe David Drinka, if you have any thoughts. Sorry, I was on mute there. I was going to ask, are we going to discuss, obviously I'm new to this forum, but are we going to discuss any broader construction plans for Memorial Park to accommodate additional uses? Like to the point that was made earlier, certainly that would make parking worse and would challenge our existing model. I'm just curious if there's a solve in the future that might address this more holistically. And if that's not the right topic to bring up now, I'm happy to address separately. Uh, maybe Steven, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that. Um, well, I, I, we've talked about it here before that uh, there's a phased approach now approved to move forward with city council. Uh, a presentation from um, the department was made about here's what they think the phased approach is going to be. I think what you're sort of asking is when the first designs were created and, and everything that we do now is still based on those initial designs that were approved a while back, um, there still wasn't quite the pickleball revolution that there is. And so there wasn't any, I, I mean, I remember, I, I, I'm thinking about the sketches that I've seen and I don't see a ton more, um, ton more parking than there is now. I, mean, I, might, I might even see less parking if I look at the sketches that are out there. Is that what you're asking? Is is it time to like say, well, pickleball is a real thing; it's here to stay. And and in the design of the redesign of Memorial Park, we need to consider where all those people are going to park because it's many, many, you know, like it's multiples of what the tennis usage is. Yeah. Many multiples. As a representative of Santa Monica Little League, I'm I'm not going to make pickleball's case for them. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, I honestly I, I don't know. Uh, I was just more curious if that was a consideration as part of the broader design or if that's even a topic at this point? I, I think it has not been a topic um, because the design, like I said, is probably the legacy design with just a phase approach. Uh, it's worth asking about. Uh, I think what Michael was asking both uh, Fast Pitch and, and Little League is, you know, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, parking was never great at Memorial. I, I, I did girls' Fast Pitch for years and years and years. and. Um, you know, it is what it is, but uh, now it's probably going to be worse if, if pickleball expands. Um, yeah. yeah. If you have if you have thoughts about it, share it, and we can bring it up during recreation parks. Nothing beyond um, sorry, been added. I mean, if it makes parking worse, there it'll just make everything else harder. I mean, I can speak to the challenges. Is that you know, typically historical use here was like you're here for a game, you're here for two or three hours. Now with the added pickleball, people are here for five, six hours. So that's there's there's no changeover. Uh, there's no people coming in and out. Same thing with our fitness room. Same thing with our gymnasium. People are here for a couple hours and stay within a two or three, then they're gone. So you have a lot more overlapping of stuff. So when people are leaving, people going. And the problem that we see um, is that there's same car there from eight in the morning till two in the afternoon. So I mean, as you can see, there's not much changeover. Of, there's not much turnover of parking. It's just the same people there, and there's no carpooling. Is there a and, Pickleball, there's a lot more no carpooling. <laughs> well, there is. Is there it's no just, time um, limit? Three hours for park patrons. Um, once again, it's, um, you know, remember years ago, we used to, I mean, well, they brought it in for a little bit was the paid parking. 
I mean, those may be potentially may need to go back to that. Might not be the the right thing to do, but to be able to deter people from staying for a longer period of time, that might be the the action we may need to go. So, I mean, I don't know. Long out there. Yeah, it seems to me your standard park time limit is around three hours, just in general, all around, right? So you're not just parking there forever. Um, you know, maybe it's something to revisit, just to keep the fluidity and turnover. Um, obviously, it's got to be monitored and policed, for lack of a better term. But um, you know, I don't, I'm not saying let's go to the extreme of you know have it being paid parking, but I, just thinking out loud. Maybe it's something to to revisit um, because if people are going to be parked there for eight hours, that's 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 an issue. Yeah, the enforcement's on a really scale, not just pick a bar. Yeah, the, the enforcement's really lax on it. I have a great idea though, Alan, that would help out you guys. Maybe they can uh, make the meters on 16th Street free after 6 p.m. Though. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can we move the meters? Can we move the meters from 16th to the Memorial lot? How about that? <laughs> that would be now awesome. They I'll just park over there. Or, <laughs> anyway, or, or, or you open, or you open up the main parking structure or the main parking lot across 16th that no one's allowed to park in. Right. Well, maybe what we could do, maybe maybe if FSAC doesn't want to take like a, well, yeah, if FSAC doesn't want to hear Eric, if you can mute yourself, I just hear echo. I'm sorry. Um, if FSAC doesn't want to like do anything with it, I can reach out directly to to Little League or Girls Fast Pitch, and you guys maybe as an organization could write an email or you know just giving your thoughts on. It. I, I think it is an important thing to note. It's something people don't really think about. But it's something that we see on like a daily basis. As Eric says, people are coming in. You know, for most of the stuff in Memorial Park, people come in for an hour and a half, two hours, and there's turnover. But right now, these guys are coming four or five hours. There's no enforcement in the lot. And so there's really no places for people to park. But just bringing it up, I'm not sure when we're going to go to commission. I believe it might be the December or January meeting. You know, just to give everybody a little bit, you know, um, but I know we're all fans of youth and, and adult sports in town and want to serve all our community. Um, but, you know, pickleball is definitely here to stay. It's a fun game. My, you know, I played the game. My sister's a fanatic for the game. And they have a national strategy on uh, what to do in their local towns. Um, you can go on the web, you can find it out, or I'll share it with, with people. But the point being is that they're, is that, you know, they get organized, they use their political willpower to do that, um, which is fine and I think democratic and, and, a, and a great way to go. We should also use our political willpower. I've already heard um, rumblings that they wanna use the parking lot above the airport park as a pickleball court. And then I don't know where that parking would go, but parking's tight at airport park too. Um, so, I would just keep in mind that, you know, pickleball is going to use their political um, willpower. They've been at at least the last five city council meetings, I believe, you know, to kind of voice and advocate for more pickleball courts. And that is the national strategy is they won't stop at one court. They'll start discovering other courts and try and enforce that political willpower which may or may not be good for the city. I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying that's been the strategy national, nationally of pickleball because it has gotten so popular in the last couple of years. Yeah, that's a great sorry, point, one other, No, I, I agree. One other question, sorry, in regards to airport park and we talk about parking, I mean, is it the huge lot that's where the, like, the flea market is every fourth Sunday or <laughs> the one that's right above the main pitch. The, it's the interim open space. Um, oh, the dog park. Okay. Oh, so it, oh, right next to the dog park. Okay, so that Correct, massive, yes. massive space. Okay. Correct. Which is a really is great one. Is that flat enough to do pickleball on? It should no, not it's, be. It's, it's not a great slope. Yeah. No. Right oh, now, they want it, oh. they want twenty k a month for it. So. <laughs> Well, as you as you as you know, the um, the airport's closing in 2028. Those two parcels are allocated for currently for the airport park expansion. Um, as you know, if something's temporarily put there, it doesn't become temporary anymore. 
So keep that in mind, everybody. So. Yeah. So are you saying, Micah, were you saying that it specifically is the one above that's on a slope? Or is it the one to the west that they're interested in pickleballing? But what Councilmember Negretti was suggesting is the interim open space. So that's the one where they have the flea markets. People, you know, that's where my kids learn. <coughs> where they did the, um, the, the pop-up uh, yeah. drive-in theater? Yeah. yeah okay. the drive-in yeah. theater. Yeah, it just doesn't seem flat enough. No, so right now what they're – only thing they're looking at is to evaluate the impacts of constructing courts and then the annual maintenance costs. So right now it's just an evaluation. Mm -hmm. See if it's even feasible. Okay. Right. To, my, to my knowledge, and I could be way off on this, the parcel to the west of that, that's flat, I believe is still under. We, we lost you. What was that you just said? The one that's west of the airport, I believe Barker Hangar still owns some type of for that. So that flat parcel. Barker has some precedent. Yes, correct. That's to my knowledge. I could be completely wrong, but I've heard from various sources that that's more than likely the case. So. Okay. Wow. I, that was the one I would have assumed they'd go for because, of course, it's flat. You could put down some stripes and some some uh, nets and call it a day. I mean, it's not a great surface for pickleball, but it's, it's flat. Okay. Right. Hmm. That that's all I have there, Eric. If we want to move on, okay. anybody else? Okay, um, then we can move on to uh, 3C uh, FSEC member uh, updates. Anybody? No, well, I think we have B, Dan. We didn't get through. Oh, B. I'm sorry. Yeah. We did. Right, you're right. Thank you. Um, 3B, uh, the RPC liaison update. Stephen. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Um, so. I sent out a couple of emails to try to gather some support for what was to have been a zoning administrative meeting on Tuesday, November 8th, strangely on election day. I know it's set way in advance and somebody wasn't really paying attention to it, but um, that would have been a hearing where the zoning administrator would um, take in the proposal from Verizon to put cell towers in kind of the middle of Memorial Park. and. Um, and we, as a as a commission, uh, we were opposed to it. We opposed it um, and sent a letter to the zoning folks back on August 2nd. Uh, and uh, through a variety of, you know, machinations, I think that, uh, you know, there was, it was deemed necessary to cancel it. So that, that hearing uh, that a lot of you guys were ready to go and, you know, speak out or at least attend and a lot of people sent uh, emails and stuff to be public comment. Uh, that now is going to happen on December 13th. Uh, roughly the same agenda. Uh, I'll mention it's not just uh, cell towers in uh, Memorial Park, as we've described, but also um, cell towers right right at the, you know, in kind of Palisades Park. So those are two things we're talking about in tomorrow night's uh, Recreation Parks meeting. Uh, we've been working a bit to try to get more information about where that Memorial Park uh, project kind of, not just where it came from, because we know where it came from, but where it is exactly in the way. And uh, Marianne has uh, been in touch with David White, uh, David White, Phil Brock, a few other people. Uh, they they really hadn't heard about it until we brought it up and really until uh, it was posted um, <laughs> there at Memorial Park with a little laminated sign affixed to a, uh, a fence on the outer on the outer section. So thanks to the team that took the picture of that and sent it on. Um, as we argued in our letter of opposition back on August 2nd, because of its exact location, not 300 yards from pretty much anything, I, I would bet that not even Snyder Diamond or Tacos Por Favor got any kind of a letter or notice about the hearing. So we were able to mobilize at least a fair amount of support. We were disappointed that our letter that we sent on August 2nd wasn't even part of the public comment for the zoning meeting. So I, I, like I say, under all that uh, attention, we feel they that might have been partly why they moved it, not just because it was election day. So now, again, we'll ask everybody to chime in, write letters, et cetera, for the December 13th hearing. In the meantime, we're trying to figure out to what extent this is already in flight. Like we don't 
we haven't been able to figure out if there's even been a contract signed because it feels like this is a, a zoning approval for something that was already kind of, you know, the ball was already rolling. And uh, we've done a public records request uh, as well as Marianne's working her way through City Hall. As, as with all city things, different people are doing different jobs now and it's a little, kind of a little bit hard to find somebody who knows where these documents are, uh, if there are any. So we're, we're working through that. Hopefully we'll have a lot more insight to share with everybody before the December 13th hearing. Uh, did, any questions? I shared a bunch of stuff on the on the group, but I'm happy to, I, I think I've got one new piece of documentation that's pretty neat. It has some uh, more pictures and stuff that I'll send uh, after this meeting. It was actually external counsel, uh, a memorandum about uh, whether or not this qualifies as something that can be or should be zoned. So, but, but like I say, it has a lot more illustration and detail than, than some of the previous presentations. Um, Stephen, do you guys know what department is that falling under for the approval um, process? Well, is that uh, public works or is that? Zoning administrator, uh, and, and again, that's the thing. We're, we're not sure that it actually sits under zoning administration because that's just an approval that says, yes, you could do this. Uh, what we're trying to figure out is who signed the piece of paper if it has been signed. Yes, you, you can do this. Uh, and we're not even sure who that is. Well, we also know, though, that if it goes to zoning, uh, it, even if it passes zoning administrator, we can appeal it and then it goes to the planning commission. Right. Well, I mean, we could maybe kind of whittle that down because uh, Eric and Micah, you guys haven't heard anything from community services on this, right? No, I mean, this, we're, we have not heard anything. Community services is really in the dark on this. Right. So then, you know, the other, you know, you know, maybe it's community development, maybe it's public works, or maybe it's, um, you know, transportation. Those are the only other departments that would make sense. Yeah, I know Mary Ann's working very hard, like Stephen mentioned. There's a lot of hearsay stuff going on for Mary Ann. Get to the bottom of it and share it with Stephen, who will then share it with us. So um, well, I think once it seems like solid if, information, so. Yeah, it seems like that's a phone call that David White could pick up and call Rick Valti and say, are you guys heading this up? You know, he, it seems pretty uh, easy David, to me. Yeah, David uh, White has actually been very resp responsive to Marianne's emails, but, it, you know, that also is, is him on the job finding out where this sits and who it sits with. So we're hoping to hear more soon, but David has responded to Marianne in a timely manner and referred her to other folks who are, their job is to get, get it together and figure out where it's at. So, you know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and, you know, hopefully in a day or two or three, we'll know more than we know today. Um, I but you're right, you're exactly to, right. You know, right. I think it's safe to say this didn't, this didn't happen overnight. Okay, so this has probably been in the works for quite some time. So this is probably all, like he mentioned, new to David White and Rick, because this was all done prior with prior leadership. So. I'm assuming this trying to get to the bottom of it is where they're trying to figure out because a lot of historical knowledge is left over the past few years. So once they figure out where all that's happened, I think then we'll have more concrete answers as to who, what, when, where, why with all this basically. So yeah, we're 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 taking a multi-pronged approach. Like and uh, like I said, we've done a public records request back in 2018 to try to piece it together. Uh, that may take forever, but you know, we're, we're taking that approach just as much as asking everybody we can find. Um, and, and like Eric says, there's a lot of hearsay and um, everyone you talk to and, and Micah and Eric can attest is that this has been around around the block once or twice already. And so everybody says, well, we all said no back then. Uh, so we're sort of trying to figure out where this, where this zombie project keeps coming from. Because it's, I mean, setting aside my own, you know, my own, thinking it's not a good idea. It's also just not, a, it's, it, even if I were on their side, I would be saying, you know, that's not the best location, you know, in the park. Wouldn't you put it somewhere else, like the perimeter or, or 
you know, if you were trying to get this through, would, would you not put it immediately next to a children's playground and on the sideline of, of two ball fields? Um, I don't know. Seems, seems, yeah. I don't know where it came from originally. I, mean, I assume it's because they need the additional square footage for the facility. There's a battery and generator facility thing that has to go nearby um, so that when power goes out, then, you know, they can still have cell service. But uh, anyway, yeah, December 13th, uh, I'll keep everybody up to date as that comes. Okay. You know, just, uh, you know, not for nothing, but, you know, Susan Klein used to run public works too, and she's in the uh, – city manager's office so she might be worth a shout out also if anybody if, if you all have individual personal connections with folks ask ask away you know it's all our it's all our purview as as representatives on and councils to kind of dig in a little bit and tap our resources for for the greater good um i don't know susan but if you do ask her she might know Um, and, and those are the, those are the main thing. That was like the big thing, and it's two two biggish items uh, for discussion tomorrow night as well. Uh, I would think I mentioned maybe even on the previous call, but at least in the interim, uh, I've dug in. I've, I've I had a successful public records request both from the district and um, and the city with all of the joint use facilities use master facilities use agreements, and I've been working to try to like read all that and get background information uh from from people like uh uh neil carey also a past uh recreation and parks commit uh chair and try to get like a, a storyline built around like where we're at where, where we were with the joint use agreement and where we are at with the joint use agreement what we talked about last time is just that um the new middle school athletics director has been hired They've started programming uh, interscholastic middle school sports. Uh, Samuel High is now playing Friday nights on, at, at the high school. So there's a domino effect, like we said, of um, field space is going to get tighter and tighter. Um, and we aren't making any more of that field. We don't, we don't have any new fields coming online soon. So um, we're going to try to figure out what the thing is. I've, I've noticed when I've been reading through all the documentation, and, and Mike and Eric know this already, I'm sure, but I don't see anything that says how much field time we get from the district. There's just, here's a big chunk of money, and uh, here's the agreement that you guys get to use anything that's non-school time. And uh, school time, you know, goes in deeper into the afternoons, uh, and also sometimes on the weekends, that's just time that can't be permitted. Um, but hopefully I can get more clarity on that as I continue to sift through it and get some historical background. Um, yeah. Um, um, Jason Hurd is the middle school um, coordinator or for the school district. Um, Jason Hurd, um, I believe, used to work for the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Monica as well, too. So, um, so he's this on board. Um, we constantly communicate with um, Brian Park with facility use and Robert White um, with facility use uh, and also the athletic director Colleen Davenport um, in regards to the upcoming stuff and you know Micah we we discuss we meet with the district or talk with the district on, on a daily basis sometimes hourly basis and for um, some different things so um, we are exploring a lot of options moving forward and spring and potentially into other things and we do and they do understand the crunch as we do as well too so um rest assured we are looking at other options and potential other options for all of our groups here so um field sports and um so like i said we're working hard at we're hard at work to find some solutions and um to be able to create some more space and create some more time um different times a year for um youth groups so like i said we're working hard at it and you know we will be keeping people um aware of all those things coming up you know as well so like i said it's um a never-ending puzzle that we're trying to put together so um and it seems like i said it's just getting a little more difficult year to year so um but we're going to work hard to be able to accommodate as much as we can yeah and if i if i end up with some sort of presentation document uh around kind of the history of joint use agreements um i'll send this to the group long long before our february meeting like as soon as it's available i'll send it for comment and feedback.
Cool. Hey, and Stephen, really quick, I was kind of looking up some stuff. I think the the Daniel's question about what department is kind of heading up the Verizon thing. I, I think it's actually the ISD department. That's what I think David told us. Um, and we're supposed to get, uh, is it a guy named Jose? Um, I can't pronounce his last name. Um, anyway, we, we've reached out to that ISD group. Um, Mar Marianne is, is in trying to get in touch with that guy. So that probably confirms what, what I was thinking, but I didn't want to say it. Cool. Anyway, that, that's all I have. If you have any questions or things you want me to bring up, uh, just reach out anytime. And, uh, uh, you know, one of my takeaways is as, as we talk a lot more about pickleball, I think I, I hadn't really thought about the impact on parking to the other sports at these places. Uh, Memorial Park in particular, yeah, I've, I've definitely felt it uh, long before there was ever pickleball. So I can only imagine what it's like now. Um, so that, that's something I can I can bring. When, when that conversation gets going again. Cool. Next item. Okay, every, any, anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Um, uh, then on to uh, discussion item 3C, uh, FSEC member updates. Anybody have anything? Um, I have one that was shared with me by um, um, St. Monica's. Their football team has made it to the semifinals. Um, surprisingly, you know, good for them. They're on to the semifinals. They have a semifinal game this weekend for flag football. I mean, flag football, tackle football. I think this is the farthest they've gone. And shoot, since I think I was in high school there. So we're talking <laughs> 25 years ago, maybe, um, where they, they won a CF championship. So it's kind of um, this is congratulations to. Jason and his team, um, and Coach Barnes, who I've, I've known for some time, and he seems to have done a really good job with the with, um, the student athletes there to get them this far. So um, hopefully they win this weekend and they make it to a CIF championship game. So you know, I know they're hard at work. It's created some soccer problems <laughs> for us to juggle these past few weeks for middle high school soccer, but um, it's been it's been a it's been a great ride for them. So um, and like I said, I know it's getting a lot of support from our group and everything else, but. So uh, great job for St. Monica's to be able to do that. So. Thanks, Eric. Um, anyone else? Okay. Um, then we will move on to Mr. White, uh, third discussion item uh, from Santa Monica, Malibu, USD. He actually just texted me. I guess there was a bit of an emergency at the high school, so he had to step out. So um, um, I know with, with well, um, Robert usually has nothing to report on regards to that. Um, I've Brian and I have had met, so I'll just give a quick update on this. Um, yesterday before he decided to leave to go to Hawaii for a week. So we'll have to text him to um, have a good time in Hawaii, Brian Park. So um, um, we had talked um, as when he comes back from that, we're talking him, myself, and I believe Robert and Carrie Upton will be meeting um, and have something to be able to share with everybody at the next quarterly meeting in regards to um, SMMUSD projects and um, sports field stuff. I know they had mentioned potentially the, the, Two of the elementary schools are getting turf, so I think they'll be able to present something a little more concrete on that in February. So we're going to get some more information on that. So um, we're setting up a meeting with that with Carrie and Brian and still the use team to be able to share with FSAC because obviously they're going to want their feedback on everything and um, obviously support to be able to get those going. So, well, you know, more space, especially when it doesn't damage turf, at least the elementary schools will be a benefit to everybody during the um the spring and summer times before daylight saving so any added space um for groups is going to be huge so that's some of the things that i know we're trying to work on with them to be able to collaborate on some different things so um so we're working with them to be able to present at the next meeting so um that's and a lot of construction at the high school if you've been there so that's going to lead to some beautiful new things for hopefully everybody to be able to benefit
Okay. Um, then uh, was there um, any written communication from the public? I received nothing. I I'm not sure if nobody received anything. Uh, no, nothing came into the general mailbox, no. Okay. And um, the future um, meeting, the next meeting will be for February. Do we have a date or do you guys looking at a date? Um, well, the first Wednesday of the month, um, that will be February 1st. One. Okay, next meeting. That will be virtual. Okay. And then um, I, um, I did send an email earlier. Sorry, I should have mentioned this during the check-in. Um, the virtual minutes are posted on the web page I had, had pushed, uh, put, put down so you can listen to the documented minutes um, for that um, for the last few meetings. Um, so just again, you can listen to that, you know, everything's available, um, on that webpage to be able to listen to all the things that were discussed as well. And, um, I think that, um, I think you mentioned in your email, Dan, if there's any other items that we want to discuss, you know, make sure to share that with Dan and John so we can get those on to, for our next meeting. Obviously this will be more important than ever, especially with, we're meeting quarterly. So having big topics and meaningful topics will be important, especially if there's anything going on. And obviously, Stephen, uh, if there's any other new information going on or for some reason we need to call a special meeting for some reason, just keep us, you guys keep us in the loop so we can get proper notification out to everybody that comes up. So, but um, but like I said, um, if anything comes up, I'm sure you'll correspond and re Reckon Parks will correspond with all of us in regards to support or for anything that's needed and I'm sure they can be spoken up at the Reckon Parks meetings as well, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'd reiterate that, um, you know, it's definitely a collaboration with everybody giving their volunteer time here and everything. And whether you just think it's, you know, only pertinent to your group or pertinent, you know, to our community or, or to several groups, I would say, you know, let's, let's get it on the agenda and let's discuss it so that we can, you know, help, you know, effective change if a change is needed or, you know, help, um, affect, you know, uh, designs or, or, um, you know, use our political willpower too to, you know, um, help out like with the zoning issue. And thank you very much, Stephen, for bringing that up too. And that's all I had to say about that. Um, does anybody have anything else? Okay, then uh, could we move to adjourn? I second. Okay, great. Then we can adjourn. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, for making it out here. Thanks, Eric and Micah, as always, and and no, I appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, happy Thanks, Thanksgiving. everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.